Hi, welcome to The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my video lesson is on triangle similarity, and we're going to apply this with indirect measurement as well. Our objectives today are that you will demonstrate your understanding of similar figures by finding missing side lengths, you will understand and be able to use angle-angle similarity, and you will also understand how to use similarity to solve indirect measurement problems. Here's our question. How can you use what you know about similar figures to find the height of an object much taller than you? This is what you'll discover today. Similar triangles, let's review the definition of similarity. Similar triangles are triangles that have corresponding sides that are proportional and corresponding angles that are congruent. When we look at these triangles, we can state that triangle ABC is similar to triangle RST. So this little squiggle is the symbol for similarity. Also noting that these names are very indicative of the parts that are corresponding. So AB corresponds to RS. So let's look at our sides. They form congruent ratios. They are proportional. Corresponding sides are proportional. So we have side AB corresponds to side RS, and that's our first ratio. AB, right here, the first two letters of our name. RS, the first two letters of our name. The second set of corresponding sides are BC and ST. That is the second ratio. And then we can see that the last two letters, BC and ST, and then our third pair is AC and RT, first and last first and last. So the order they appear in their name have help you to determine which sides are corresponding. Now let's apply that. You are going to determine whether or not these figures are similar using that idea. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So first we're going to identify corresponding sides. Six corresponds to five, 7 corresponds to 6, and 10 corresponds to 9. Let's form our three ratios. 6 to 5, 7 to 6, and 10 to 9. I can already look at these and see that they're in simplest form and they're not the same. They're not equal to each other. We can also check for proportionality because 6 to 5 needs to make a proportion. These need to be proportional. And 6 times 6 is 36, and 5 times 7 is 35. They're not congruent or proportional. 7 times 9 is 63, and 6 times 10 is 60. So I didn't need to check the second one. As soon as 1 does not work, then it's not similar. So we can say no. Since the corresponding sides are not proportional, the triangles are not similar. Now let's talk about finding a missing side when we are told that our figures are similar. We're asked to find the value of x, which is right here. So the first thing we want to note is this triangle is turned, and I can tell that if I'm not quite sure I can go up to the name. Side AB is going to score, correspond to side DE, so AB corresponds to DE. So when I write my proportion, 27 forms a ratio with 15 and 9 to X. So corresponding sides, 27 and 15, need to be equal to corresponding sides, 9 to X. 27 times x is equal to 9 times 15, which is 135. Divide both sides by 27, and x is equal to 5, telling me that my missing side length, df, is 5 feet. Now, so let's identify our corresponding sides. 30 corresponds to x, and 35 corresponds to 7. Let's write our proportion. Our ratio 30 to x is equal to 35 to 7. We're going to do cross product property. 35 times x is equal to 30 times 7, which is 210. Divide both sides by 35, and x is equal to 6, and our answer is 6 inches. Now let's learn about angle-angle similarity. If two angles of a triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. 
So we learn this angle angle similarity rule because we know that if whatever this missing angle is going to be the same as this missing angle because they're triangles and all three angles need to add up to 180. So now when we can cut out needing to know that third angle, as soon as you can prove that two corresponding angles are congruent, then we know that we have triangles that are similar to each other. So we know that 24 is congruent to 24, corresponding angles and congruent, corresponding angles and congruent, and since two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, these triangles are similar. We're going to use that along with indirect measurement to find an unknown measurement using similar figures. So what we want to know here is the height of this tree, and it's much too tall for us to measure. So we're going to use what we know about indirect measurement. So the sun is shining down on the tree and me at the same angle. So we know that the angle formed by the sun and the top of the tree is the same angle as the sun hitting my head. So these are corresponding angles and congruent. Now the sun is shining down and making my shadow, and it's also making the tree's shadow. We're going to understand that the tree, in theory, is 90 degrees. It's a right angle to the ground, as am I standing at a right angle to the ground. So I can say that the triangle formed by my height and the sun shining down and my shadow is going to be similar to the triangle of the sun shining down on the tree, the height of the tree, and the shadow of the tree. These are similar figures. So now I know that my corresponding sides are congruent. Our cor my corresponding angles are congruent. I have two pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent. So angle angle similarity, similar triangles, and my corresponding sides are going to be proportional. So x corresponds to five and a half feet, and the shadow of the tree at 19 and a half feet is corresponding to my shadow of eight and a quarter feet. Using cross product property, 8.25x is equal to 5.5 times 19.5. Divide both sides by 8.25, and, and we get that x is 13, and we learn that this tree is 13 feet tall without having to measure it. I knew my height, and all I had to do was measure the shadows cast by the sun of the tree and myself. Now it's your turn. We're going to answer a two-part question. In part A, I'm asking you to determine if these triangles are similar and be able to explain your work. So please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're looking to use angle-angle similarity. Here's one pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. They are both labeled as 90 degrees, so I need one more pair. I identify that these are intersecting line segments and they're vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So therefore, these triangles are similar using angle-angle similarity. Since two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, these triangles are similar. Here's part B. You and your friend are on opposite sides of the river. This blue is our river. We're standing directly across from each other, and we want to know how wide this river is, and it's just too far to measure. So you stand 12 feet back from the shoreline and put a flag 8 feet to your right. Your friend is on the shoreline and puts their flag 5 feet to their right. So seeing as we already proved angle-angle similarity, that we had vertical angles and corresponding right angles, we know that these figures are similar, and it's your turn to find the value of x. Go ahead and pause the video and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're going to do corresponding sides or proportional, seeing as we know our triangles are similar, and we know that 8 corresponds to 5, and there's my first ratio, and 12 is going to correspond to x. So 8 times x is equal to 12 times 5, which is 60. Divide both sides by 8, and our x, our width of our river, is 7.5 feet wide. That's indirect measurement for you. So that is indirect measurement and similar figures. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. 
I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.